Schon anfangen? His Royal Highnesses, top government functionaries, staff and students, invited guests, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is my pleasure this afternoon to welcome every one of you to today's inaugural lecture. This is the 21st inaugural lecture series of the University of Benin to be delivered by Professor Mrs. Charity Chidi or also a, a professor of hydrology and fishery biology. Topic. And this 201st inaugural lecture is titled Zooplankton, a necessity to humanity and the aquatic environment. May I now humbly invite the Registrar, represented this afternoon by the Deputy Registrar, Mr. Andrew Adodo, to introduce the Vice-Chancellor and members of the Vice-Chancellor's entourage. Distinguished guests, invitees, ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the world round one in the world round one in the inaugural lecture series of the University of Nigeria. Sorry, 201 in the inaugural lecture series of the University of Nigeria. Please permit me to dwell on the protocol uh, already observed by the University PRO as I introduce the Vice Chancellor and members of his entourage. It is my singular honor and privilege to introduce the Vice Chancellor of the University of Nigeria, Professor FFO of USA, fellow Nigerian Society of Engineers, who is ably represented by the Deputy Vice Chancellor of Administration, Professor Jacob Yorobo. 
others with the Vice Chancellor conclude. Represent, uh, representing the University of Liberia is Dr. Luke O. Opasu. <laughs> representing the University of Bossa is Mr. R. E. Ero. After today, we have Provost Deans and Directors, Provost College of Medical Sciences, Professor E. Okiasu. <laughs> Representing the Dean's School of Postgraduate Studies, we have Dr. D. N. Iseko. <laughs> we also have the Dean of Students, Professor O. B. Osadolo. <laughs> the host Dean of the inaugural lecturer is Professor C, uh, 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 Dean, Faculty of Life Sciences, Professor C. E. Okata. <laughs> Dean, Faculty of Arts, Professor E. Erato. <laughs> Dean, School of Basic Medical Sciences, Professor Mrs. H. A. Oppo. <laughs> Dean, School of Dentistry, we have Professor N. A. Seth. Dean of the Education, we have Professor EOS Yam. <laughs> Representing the Dean of Engineering, we have Professor M.A. Oladin De. <laughs> also representing the Dean of Faculty of Management Sciences, we have Dr. Jones Ejechi. E. E. <laughs> the Dean School of Medicine, we have Professor M. I. Mom. <laughs> Dean Faculty of Physical Sciences, we have Professor A. P. of Java. <laughs> we have Directors, Director Center for Gender Studies, we have Professor Mrs. E. U. Edison. <laughs> Director of IPAES, we have Professor S. O. IPA. Director of the first learning program, we have Professor F. E. O. Amadou. <laughs> Director of Student Guidance and Counseling is here represented by Mrs. Gladys Amo Kule. <laughs> the last one to be the Acting Director of the Institute of Child Care, we have Dr. D. Wanel. <laughs> it is now my pleasure to invite the Vice Chancellor of the University of New to introduce the inaugural lecturer, the Vice Chancellor. Responsible officers of the University of Benin, members of Senate, Provost College of Medical Sciences, deans of faculties and schools, directors of institutes, professors and members of council, my law, spiritual and temporal, staff and students of the University of Benin, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the Vice Chancellor himself would have loved to be here this evening, but is on other assignment. Hence, he asked me to be presented. It is with great pleasure I welcome you to the 201st in the inaugural lecture series of the University of Benin. Today's lecture is the 54th to be delivered in my tenure as Vice Chancellor of this university. The 17th lecture to be delivered in the Faculty of Life Science. And the eighth in the Department of Animal and Environmental Biology. As a way of providing routine updates on activities of the university, I'm glad to report that the 2017-2018 second semester lectures are going on smoothly in schools, faculties, and institutes. I want to use this opportunity to thank all stakeholders for their contribution to the relative peace on campus. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce to you our lecturer for today. She is Professor Charity Chidi Oransaye. The title of her lecture is Zooplankton, 
a necessity to humanity and the aquatic environment. Professor Charity Chidi Oresai was born on the 25th of July 1954 to late Chief W. Gabriel and Mrs. C. W. Gabriel from Degema local government area, Portacot River State. She attended St. Andrew's Primary School, Portacot, and obtained the Primary School Living Certificate in 1965. She began her secondary school education at Altiki Crowder Memorial Guest School. LLM World Portacot in 1966 and completed her studies at St. Gabriel's Guest School in Imo State in 1972. She attended College of Science and Technology Portacot between 1973 and 74 for the London GC advanced level. Before gaining admission into the University of Ibada, where she obtained a BSc Honor Zoology degree in 1978. Professor Ronsai had a mandatory national youth service at Owo High School, Owo, Ondo State, in 1979 and proceeded to the University of Portacot, where she obtained MSc degree in hydrobiology and fisheries in 1982. She worked as a lecturer in River State University of Science and Technology, Portacot, and earned a PhD degree in zoology in 1987 from the University of Benin. She took up appointment with the University of Benin in 1990 as lecturer one and rose through the academic grant to the position of professor in 2012. Her area of specialization is hydrobiology and fishery biology. Professor Oronsaye has held various administrative positions and served in various committees within and outside the University of Benin, such as acting head. Department of Animal and Environmental Biology, University of Benin, from 9, 2009 to 2011. She has served as an assessor, external examiner, facilitator, resource person to several institutions, and a member of several accreditation panels at undergraduate and postgraduate levels within and outside Nigeria. She has over 40 publications in local national and foreign peer review journals and has attended many conferences locally and internationally to present papers. Professor Ronsai is a member of many professional and learned societies, among which are Member Science Association of Nigeria, Member Institute of Biology in London, Member Nigeria Association for Aquatic Science, Member Plankton Ecology Group, Member Gender and Science Technology, Member Nigeria Society for Experimental Biologists, Member Organization of Women Scientists in Developing Countries. She is a recipient of several awards, such as Federal Government Scholarship Award, Zimbabwe Award, a sponsorship award for one of the best abstracts to attend an international conference in Zimbabwe in 1991. Swedish Award, a sponsorship award for one of the best abstracts to attend a GA SAT conference in Ghana in 1998. <laughs> Professor Ronsai has served as secretary to women organizations in the church. No wonder my venerable is here. <laughs> Her hobbies include reading and gardening. She is happily married to Apostle. General Steve Oronsai, retired deputy boss at University of Benin. And they are blessed with children. You welcome, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to invite Professor Charity Chidi Oronsai, a professor of hydrobiology and fishery biology, to deliver her inaugural lecture. Uh, every represented by BBC as this. 
principal officers of the university, DBC Academics, DBC Eshawa Campus, Registrar, Bursa, Librarian, Provost College of Medical Sciences, Deans and Directors, members of the University of Bini Governing Council, professors and members of Senate, heads of departments, highly respected academic and non-academic staff, my loves, spiritual and temporal, great University of Bini alumni, greatest universe students, the Royal Mothers, Talent Chiefs, members of press and distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to the 201st inaugural lecture series of this great university. Dedication. With gratitude to Almighty God for his infinite love and care, I dedicate this inaugural lecture to my parents, late Chief W. Gabriel and Mrs. C. W. Gabriel, who show so much interest and concern for my education and progress in life. Also to my husband, Apostle General Esa Oronsaye, FCA, SCMA, for his understanding and encouragement in my academic work. Also to my uncle, Professor S.C. Mokoli, for his support and advice. Preamble. I want to start by thanking my Vice Chancellor, Professor F.F.O. Nguense, fellow Nigerian Society of Engineers, for giving me the opportunity to deliver this inaugural lecture on zoo plankton and necessity to humanity and aquatic environment. When I came to University to start my PhD program in the zoology department, my supervisor, Professor Edwin McBoge of Blessed Memory, told me that I will work on zoo plankton. I said, Prof, can I? That means my looking into the microscope all the time. He said, you can. In fact, you see clearer with the microscope. I said, okay, the Lord is my strength. I started with his dissecting microscope and his research microscope that had camera receiver and drawing tube. Later, when I went to the Royal University of Ghent in Belgium for more laboratory analysis of my zoo planting samples, I was introduced to a variety of stereo zoom microscopes. I even had the opportunity of using the electron microscope for my analysis. I now use Microsoft with joy and keen interest. I have even taught and encouraged many students to use the Microsoft with keen interest. In fact, we can easily improvise light with our cell phones when there is power out there to continue with sorting or dissecting the zoo planting instead of shouting, oh, never, oh, never. So we are on without never. <laughs> Introduction. Zoo plants consist of floating animals which drift with the water current and whose swimming power, if any, serves mainly to keep them afloat. The word zoo plankton is derived from the Greek word zoo, meaning animals, and plantos meaning wanderers or drifters. So the plural Singular nature of the word zoo planting is captured in the meaning. That's why we say one zoo planting, ten zoo planting. Also, the same thing applies to the word species. The, the meaning of the word species it pertains to biological organism. And so we say one species, ten species. But we say if you say one species, Without adding S to it, they are not talking about biological organisms. They are talking about money in metallic form. That is the coins. Yes, then go to our zoo plants, they are mainly microscopic in size. But few members are macroscopic, such as the jellyfish and the fish larvae, 
which can be seen with the naked eyes. There are basically two main types of zooplankton. The holoplankton, that is the permanent zooplankton. And the meroplankton, that is the temporary zooplankton. The holoplankton spend both their larva and adult stages as zooplankton. Examples include the copepos, the cladoceras, the rotifers, the euphacids, that is the krill, opiopleura, and the chitoglans. The meroplankton are mainly the larva stages of many pelagic, nectonic, and bakery animals. There are numerous examples of them, which include crab larva, shrimp larva, mollusk larva, or velica larva, polychip larva, nauplus larva, medusa stages of steroid hydra, that is the jellyfish. These are some examples of the holoplankton. Zooplankton study is of necessity to fisheries, aquaculture, and paleoclinological research. OGA and AO 1994, Ayoga and Boneka 2004. They are globally recognized as pollution indicator of disease in the aquatic environment. Rutherford et al. 1999, Agowe and Sikoki, 2005. In Nigeria, published works and a search on the internet shows that the study of zooplankton has been very intensive in inland rivers and lakes. Green, 1962, Ebonge, 1974, 1981, and Akin Oriola 2003. However, studies are opening up in the coastal, brackish, and marine water bodies in recent times. Ekoge and Orosaye 1996, Orosaye and Okata 2000, Orosaye 2005, 2006, 2007, Olong Poro. And of Amarosa 2009, Arosa 2017. Zooplankton generally inhabit the upper and surface layers of the water body. They are found in the seas, oceans, rivers, lakes, ponds, and streams. Here are some examples of the meroplankton. These are mainly larval stages. Copepods are contribution to knowledge. The copepods are part of the holoplankton, that is, they are the, the permanent plankton. You will always find them as plankton in the water body. They belong to phylum Atropoda. Class Prostatia, subclass Copecoda. Class Prostatia, that they belong to that class where you have crayfish. They are the same class as crayfish. For, for us to understand what these copepods are all about, we visualize crayfish. They belong to the same class as crayfish, but they are very tiny members of that class, and so you can only see them with microscope. You can't see them with their naked eyes. I work extensively on the copper pots, looking at their systematics, taxonomy, and ecology. Samples we are collected from Delta State, Edo State, Lagos State, and River State. 55 microns and 100 micron mesh sizes of planting nets were used for sampling. 
zooplankton samples were pre preserved in 4% buffered coralline solution. Purple species were sorted out and dissected under the sterozoom dissecting microscope. A description of the species was made using standard keys and works of the following authors on Mirror, 1956, Land, 1965, Wells, 1970, Egbogge, 1972, Georgia and Fernando, 1986, and Karanovic et al., 2001. The appendages of copper species are very important in their identification and taxonomy. That is the appendages of the copper pulse as seen under the microscope, under the electron microscope. I use the electron microscope for part of my analysis. The number one there is showing the antenna. The antenna is used to know what genera it belongs to. Number two shows the forecast, that's the third region. That will tell you what species it belongs to, the sample we are looking at belongs to, the nature of the forecast. Then this is the mouth part, that will show you also what species it belongs to. Then these are the spine arrangements and the pulse and sealer pattern on the body. All these ones are very useful when you want to know what species they belong to. In the course of studying their occurrence and taxonomy, a number of species were recorded for the first time in Nigeria. They are number one, Acacia Tonsa. This was found in the brackish water zone of the Wari River around the year 1993. The species was re-described to show the fine hair and fine ornamentation of the male fish periopod. Periopod is the swimming leg of the copepod. We also have swimming leg in a crayfish, those small legs you see in the crayfish. These are, they are also called periopod, as we call this one periopod. So, we use the periopod. Number two. Yeah, we finish with the Tasca Number two is Nanopus palustri. This occurs as zones of salinity values from 2 parts per thousand to 18 parts per thousand. In the Wari River, Orosa and Ebogen, 1997, it was really described to show the arrangement of the fine hairs on the horseshoe shape flows through. The next one is Ortona Nana. This species was obtained from Bennett Island and Brutu in Wari River system around Sayan of Kaka 2000. They have study provided a preliminary information on the cyclops of Nigerian coastal river. The fourth one is Saminkola species. This was sampled from Lagos Lagoon, an ectoparasite of fish. It is figured to show the terrible structural modification of the copepod as an ectoparasite in order to be able to attach itself to the host. So that is the Sabicola, which is a parasite, a parasitic copepod, and this is the normal copepod. You can see the difference. There is a heavy program of discussion on Sabicola because it has to attach itself to the host. Further studies and analysis were carried out during the two species new to science we have found. They have been sent to British Museum for Natural History in London for more taxonomic 
nomenclature. The species are Pseudobradia species. This species was found in Bonnie River, Delta State, and Bonnie River, River State, where conductivity values range from 5,000 to 10,000 micro cement per centimeter. That is brackish water condition. This specimen was identified as Pseudobradia species due to the presence of the anal pore instead of a well developed anal operculum. But this species differs from the non described Pseudobradia species due to absence of the solar place accessory system on the fifth period article. I told the fifth period is the swimming leg, which we also have in the fish. The second one is the Atrodus species node. This specimen was identified as the Atrodus species due to the following features. The triangularly shaped prostrum, that is the triangularly shaped prostrum on the copper pot. It's all that projection on the maxilla. But this species differ from the known described that produce species due to the following features. The article has rows of spines at the lateral and medial portions of the anterior region and also the exoproduct of the first periopod, those swimming legs, is reduced and has to set segment. This species was obtained from the Wari River system where conductivity values range from wow, 10,000 to 30,000 micro cement per centimeter. That is marine condition. So I wonder why all these details and jaw-breaking scientific names, they are necessary. When you go to your water body, be it stream, pond, or river, and you sample for zoo planting, you come back and analyze it at your laboratory, and you find the papers, you ring the bell, a warning bell. Because there are members of these papers that are vectors of the disease Dracunculus pedinesis. That is the guinea worm disease. These copepods belong to particular species. And you need to go through this process to know whether those species that are vectors of that disease are present or absent in a river. We carried out a zoo planting study at Tikova River. Through it, I found some copepods. So I had to go through this process to know whether those species were present or absent in the Koba River. Both at the bridge edge at the Koba Slope and at the dark side at Upper Bawadi, Bini City. The good news is that those species that are vectors of the Guinea worm disease were absent. They do not occur in the Koba River. That's why you see people, they go to the Koba River. They swim, they walk their cars, they move up and down. You have not seen any of them come down with any one disease. You don't see them. It doesn't happen because that vector is not in the Koba River. Koba River is free of those vectors of any one disease. That's why the fact that. The study of the ecology of the zoo planting with regard to their interaction in food web has shown that they play a pivot role at secondary production level. That is the diagram of food web based on secondary production 
by Zooplankton. Source, Old Room, 1975. Fish is such as sardine, the bulgar fish, and malosa king grata, herring, and even the mighty nuclear well shark, that's the blue well, feed mainly on zoo planting. Kawagura, 1980. In fact, the nuclear well shark, when it wants to feed, swims up to the surface water level, opens its mouth wide, Taking it the zooplankton while swimming along, that is horizontally in the sea for three days before it sinks down to the sea bottom to digest the food. Kawamura, 1980. The toothless whale shark is a bottom dweller, leading 100 to 150 meters down the sea or ocean. But when he wants to swim, he swims up to the surface layer. Recall, that is, uh, recall that the zooplankton inhabits the surface layer of the water body. So it swims up to the surface layer where the zooplankton are to feed on them because that's what it feeds on. It can't feed on those things that are down the sea. That was how God used it to carry Prophet Jonah to Nineveh. <laughs> The book of Jonah in the Holy Bible, chapter 1, verse 17. I quote, Now the Lord has prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish for three days. I quote. So, the unseen hand of God that has prepared the fish Make the fish to swallow, to swallow Jonah and to swim towards Nineveh. And by the third day, he vomited Jonah alive and well. That is the mystery of God to go through fish and come out alive and well in three days. You can see, science takes us to understand God's mysteries better. And so we can appreciate him more. Mosquito larva in ditches 
in source my ten and rain 2014. The Netherlands and those areas like Holland, many of us are Holland, these Netherlands is that Holland area. So when I saw this, from time to time I browse the internet to see current lines of research in my field. Especially those ones that will be of benefit to my environment here in Nigeria. So when I saw this, I said, oh, this will be of benefit to us. We have more mosquitoes mosquito here than even them at Netherlands and Poland area. I recall earlier studying I carried out on the Koba River, during which I found some carnivorous copepots, around 2008. So I decided to repeat their experiment. I got to aquarium tanks, I labeled them tank A, tank B. I put water in them, bring water food each. I kept them outside, open, and didn't cover the aquarium tank. Open in an undisturbed area. After five days, I went back to my tank, and saw some people lava wriggling up and down in them. The thing is this, if you leave water, not even in an aquarium tank, in any container outside, if you leave it open and the water is not disturbed, that same day or even in a few days time, the female mosquito will go and lay her eggs in that water. And in a few days time, those eggs will hatch into larvae. And when you see her, when you go and check it, you will see mosquito larvae wriggling up and down. So when I saw those mosquito larvae wriggling up and down in my tanks, I said, good, my experiment is making progress. So, I went to Goba River and collected some zoo planting. I came back to Uniben, sorted out some carnivorous copepots, because I'm very, very used to them. Sorted out some carnivorous copepots, got 200 individuals, put them in tank A. Tank B, I left them alone. Tank B, I left it alone without copepots as a control. Seven days after, I went back to my aquarium tanks. Tank A, all the mosquito lava had been eaten up by the copper pots. Tank B, mosquito lava was still wriggling up and down. I said, good, we don't need to go all the way, go far to Netherlands to get copper pots, carnivorous copper pots, to kill mosquito lava in our ditches. We have them right here in our own Hikoba River. So we can use them to control mosquito lava in our ditches and gutters. Please, may I crave your indulgence to make some acknowledgments. Acknowledgement. My first thanks go to the one almighty God for his love and mercy is upon my life. To my husband, Apostle General Esther Orange, a retired deputy boss of the University of Benin, I say a very big thanks. He has been the one giving me all to do and give my inaugural lecture. I am sure he's more fulfilled than me today. Professor ABM Eboge of blessed memory. He's just unforgettable. We can't forget him at all. He introduced me to the study of soup planting. He was a very big daddy to many of us in the department. Not only me, his students. To many of us, he graduated many PhDs. To his uh, Professor Eboge's wife, she's Mrs. Aru Eboge, a retired deputy boss of, uh, a retired uh, registrar of this university, is a lifetime friend of the department. Always keeping in touch at 
are asking for our progress. I say a million thanks to my uncle, Professor S. T. Okoli, also a retired professor, professor from Education Faculty, University of Benin. He has been very enthusiastic. He has been very enthusiastic about my educational progress. Right from my primary school days. I also thank his wife, Mrs. F. N. Okoli, who has been very caring and understanding. I'm indebted to Professor N. O. Egafona. He was the first dean of our faculty, the young faculty. He was the first dean of our faculty. As a dean, he was so concerned with the staff progress that he went extra miles to the administration to check if our papers were promptly sent out to external assessors. I do also remember his wife, Professor M. A. Professor K. A. Egafona, a very friendly fellow whom I have known since our student days at the postgraduate hostel in Kenwa Campus. <laughs> to Professor M. J. Ikenegome, also a retired professor of this university, I am very grateful. He appointed me as an acting HOD when he was the dean of our faculty. I had no wind of that appointment until the very day I saw my letter. I went home, showed the letter to my husband, and asked if I can easily make it, living so far, 12 kilometers from school. He told me he was fond of it two weeks ago. Ah, I pinched myself and said, oh, men are really better than us women at keeping secrets. <laughs> I am very thankful to Professor C.C. Osubo. He was the dean of our faculty when I was promoted to the rank of a professor. He was He will always give us information, the criteria, and new changes for promotion. I am proud of my immediate past dean, Professor Mrs. O. I. Enabulele, the first female dean in the faculty. She is very hardworking and energetic. I thank my current dean. <laughs> Professor C. E. Okaka, he has encouraged me so much with my publication. You can see he published a number of papers with me, encouraging me all the time. I do thank Professor S. Omonigo of the MCB, Microbiology Department, and his family. They are truly friends in me. To Professor F. E. Okiame and his wife, who is my namesake, Charity, I say thanks. I was always welcome to chemistry department whenever I went begging for the still water to dilute my formalin. Because uh, the still has gone bad, and I must do my work, and I had to make friends with my neighbors. Professor F. I. Okuta, also a retired professor. His research microscope was always easily accessible to me. I am grateful to Professor Reginald Victor, my second supervisor. I do remember his constructive criticisms. Professor Victor will always criticize your work, but for me it was a constructive criticism because I will see a lot of sense in those criticisms, and I will take corrections and appreciate. Professors A. Kumans, L. J. Dumont, Mr.
Mrs. S. Wellekins, Ms. Sibyl Mars, and members of Hydrobios Research Laboratory at Royal University of Ghent, Belgium. I do always appreciate you for your hospitality. You show no discrimination between whites and blacks. You freely invited me, a black, to your tea, coffee breaks. You didn't even say I should contribute a dime. I do thank the River State, my state of origin, the government, for sponsoring my trip to Belgium. I give thanks to my Lord Bishop, Dr. Peter O.J. Imaswe. He showed that he was a true shepherd when we, some church members, went to Israel on Christian pilgrimage with him. He will see that everybody has eaten before his exit. We are surprised. You big bishop, you care so much about us. Do your words. We should be running around We want thing or the other for you, but you are the one doing for us. He was a true shepherd. I'm also appreciative of his wife, Mrs. G.O. Imaswe, and all my good people at St. Savior's Anglican Church, GRA, Billy City, for your love and prayer. To my teachers in primary and secondary schools, and also my lecturers at university level, I say a million times. You will start with me as one now on earth. And cap it up in heaven with the crown of glory from Christ. Amen. So teachers must go to heaven. Or do everything to go to heaven. Because they have crown of glory. Most of us are praying for them. To the pastors and members of Self Souls Vision, I do cherish your all night prayers for me. That vision do not play with all night prayers. I do appreciate my friend, whom I have known since the good old days in Port Harcourt, Professor and Dr. Mrs. Boadia of Barcomistry Department. Unibet. The unseen hand of God has been bringing us together. To Professor I. Omori of Law Faculty, your yes is yes. Remain blessed in the Lord. Amen. I'm very proud of most of the students that have taught at undergraduate and postgraduate levels. Some of them are now my colleagues in the department, namely Professor T.O.T. Imobe, my current session. <laughs> Associate Professor I.P. Obo, NUC Awardee. Yeah. <laughs> 
academic and non-academic. Some of which are Professor P.O.T. Mobe, the OCHOD. Professor Okaka, my dear. Professor Ezomayan, former DVC. Professor Olomokoro, I go down. I can brought me a baby, a demo, okay. I'm all the rally, I love her. I'm Professor Mrs. Ilova, Professor Mrs. Tari Fufeni, Professor Mrs. Edoso, Mrs. I, Osakwe, our secretary, and all the administrative staff at the HOD's office. Mr. S. Okorefe, and all the technologists and laboratory staff of the department. IEA, the cleaner, I won't forget her. Without them, I could not have had a department to work from. I also thank the administrative staff at the dean's office, faculty of life science, and all the entire members of the faculty, both academic and non-academic. Finally, the last and the greatest, I say endless thanks, endless thanks to members of my nuclear and extended family. My husband, Apostle Jara Esa Oronsaye, the children, Ebe, Fed, Uwa, Ewe, Osaze and Andrew, as well as the grandchildren, Efe, Ife,
please very rise for the Unibet Anthem.